his lip was badly cut. He was in deep, deep trouble in that fight with Breedis Prescott, but somehow he managed to pull it out. Mike Alvarado, 32-0 with 23 knockouts. You know, we talked about Hesta uh, coming up from Muay Thai boxing, you know, has not been actually technically stand-up boxing for an awfully long time. Alvarado was an amateur wrestling champion, so even though he's 31 years old, he's only been boxing for about 10 years, 11 years. Alvarado's been an impressive guy, and he's still undefeated at the age of 31. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Mike Alvarado and Mauricio Herrera. All right, and once again, we'll see as these two stack up against each other, and it's almost exactly the same. They are the same age, they are the same height, they are the same weight, and a slight edge in reach goes to Mike Alvarado. First, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing red, trimmed, and gold. He weighed in at the super lightweight limit of 140 pounds with a professional record of 18 victories against one lone defeat, and seven of those victories coming by way of knockout. Representing Riverside, California, Mauricio El Maestro Herrera. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing black with teal trim. He weighed in at an identical 140 pounds. He enters the ring undefeated in 32 professional bouts. 23 of those victories coming by way of knockout. Representing the 303 and fighting out of Thornton, Colorado, Mile High, Mike Alvarado. Mexico City. You know, as, as the two sat, uh, stood there for the referee's instructions, Alvarado looked much bigger and much yes. stronger and wider and bulkier than did Herrera. I tell you, he, he's a big 140 pounder. Uh, I had the experience when I was still fighting. I sparred Mike Alvarado. I was coming down in weight. I was already down on my weight, getting ready for a fight, and I sparred him. He must have been weighing about 154. And uh, you could feel his power. The guy's very strong, and uh, you know he tries to make things happen. He's very aggressive. Work out, work out. Alvarado work pressing out. forward there already. Work out, work out. Herrera, I know told us yesterday he felt he could exploit Alvarado on the inside even though Alvarado he acknowledges is the stronger man and he thinks he actually has the the nuances and the subtle skills of fighting on the inside to him he has a very good uh, support group there you see the move to the body now look at these little tricky moves little tapped him with the left to the body got out of there jabbed on the way out nice work by Herrera I also I tell you, Herrera is staying on the inside there uh, seemingly a little too long you can get abused in there. I know when they mentioned that, Raul, yesterday, that they were sparring with Sergio Mora and Alfonso Gomez, I thought, is the contender gym still open? <laughs> where, where, where did you find that? Uh, Mora, Mora is a real cutie pie. There's no question. He will get you ready to fight a slick boxer. Herrera, I noticed some bruising underneath the left eye. Now he's standing there in a clubbing right hand from Alvarado. You know, Herrera doesn't want to get too brave here. I agree. I was standing in the pocket a little too close. That is no man's land, and Alvarado will hurt you. Yeah, it's too early for Mauricio to get up brave like that. He needs to make his work and just keep turning, yeah, giving him angles like he did right now. Three and four punches. Now get out of there. Yeah, you see the taps to the body again. When I say cutie pie, that's that's not an insult. That's <laughs> that's a badge of honor. If you can be called a cutie pie, that means you have these subtle skills. You can be an artist in there. And Herrera now taking shots. He can't stand there and trade with Mike Alvarado, no question. Another hook by Alvarado, and the face begins to redden on Mauricio Herrera. See, that's a big mistake by Herrera. He don't want to get in the toe-to-toe -to -toe match like that. Uh, he's standing Alvarado. right there. Yeah, he's Alvarado's too strong for him. Uh, it looks like he's caught. He's, he's reddening on the left cheek of Herrera as he answers back. He's getting badly bruised underneath that left eye. It's turning black Keep already. Yeah, you can tell you don't stand there and take a picture. You know, do your work, get out. Hook lands by Herrera. Alvarado standing in, looking to measure him with the right hand. This is what Herrera said. He likes fighting off the ropes. Look at him, combination punch off the ropes. Lands with the right hand. Herrera battling off the ropes now. Good action here in round two. Oh. Best round of the night so far. Sit down, sit down. All right, I don't think Herrera fought a smart second round there, but he did some great things at the end of the round when he fought off the ropes very well. But Alvarado picks up momentum as he comes forward. Look at him come forward and land that big shot. And we'll see Mike Alvarado again with the jab. He caught 
He got caught right there coming in by a Mauricio jab lead, then a right hook. So both fighters going at it there. End the rope, the end of the round, good exchanges. I think Alvarado was getting the best of it and the bell rang. And I think Alvarado hit him a little bit after the bell, right when the bell rang. But you just sense the danger when he stands back there, although he ripped some good shots and lands on Alvarado. I, I just feel that Herrera's trying to prove a point here about fighting off the ropes, but I, I just see, think it's gonna cost him. Yeah, I agree with you. He's going toe to toe with him. He's staying in there too long. He's, he works pretty well off the road. He, he throws does. his combination, then he leads back and he counters after that with an overhand right. He connects, but you could see Mike Alvarado's strength and his power shot. They're just taking over. Look at Good that. overhand right by Alvarado. Good old school boxing here on the ropes. No clinching. They're just making the decision to fight toe to toe, leaning on each other. This is great stuff, I tell you. This is sizzling action. You can hear the buzz in the crowd because they're not used to seeing this in modern times. Usually there'll be a clinch, there'll be a break, not here. Final 15 seconds of the third round. Herrera waits to counter. Now he unloads. And he's scoring. Herrera's beginning to win the crowd here. I don't know if he's hurting him, but he's landing and he's scoring. Outstanding action, finishes round three. Alvarado opening up, trying to get in the power shots now, and a clubbing overhand right. Straight up the middle comes Herrera and lands with a right hand. This is the real battle of attrition right here. Who will be able to punch like this three, four rounds from now? I would imagine probably not either guy. Alvarado gets him into the corner. And Herrera fires back. I tell you, when Herrera fires back, too, they're straight up the middle, so they can drive Alvarado back and snap back his head. They're very fast, crisp combinations, very accurate combinations for Mauricio Herrera. And you can see the mouse under the right eye of Herrera now as well. That could also influence the judge as they look at one guy getting busted up. You don't think it should influence things, but it does. He's basically been fighting this round in that corner the whole round. I wonder Herrera. if he's, I wonder, you know, Raul, if he's waiting for the final minute now to pour it on and impress. Well, he's been, I mean, he's losing the whole round, and uh, you're not going to win the round by winning the last 10 seconds of the round. Well, no, but in the final yeah. minute, maybe. He has, he's uh, turned perhaps, it on now. Yeah. Perhaps. Let's see what he does. Up, up, bring him up, bring now him he up. starts doing some scoring. He's landing shots there. Alvarado hammering down with a right hand. Herrera trying to stay close. Wayne in yes. Mauricio Herrera. He goes back now with his mouth wide open. That's a bad sign. Alvarado tries to come in. And he has thrown that overhand right, just missing now. Herrera fights off the ropes with a five-punch combination. No hold, no hold. Kenny Bala says no holding, and that helps Herrera, who lands. That's like three or four body shots. Just looking to touch him now, set him up for something hard. And there it is. Good right hand. That hurt. It's gonna to be tough for Herrera to survive here. Alvarado with the uppercut. He'd landed previously with the jab, and now Herrera fires back in the final 15 seconds. This is the sweet science. This is good skill on the inside, not just brute force. Well, the eye is now slammed shut on Herrera, so really he can't see that right hand coming. And there you see the overhand right from Alvarado landing again. He's being outstrengthed now by Mike, but he's trying to hang in there. It's amazing that he, he comes He's down. in it. And again, Rich, if you had him only up by, well, three rounds, and he takes this one back, it's not crazy to think that the judge might have it off by one round in the other direction than you. Oh. Good right hand. Alvarado does not want to give the judges that chance. He is waiting to unload that right hand. Uppercut. Tries to shoulder him off. He's got Herrera on the ropes. Yeah, I'll tell you, you can't, you won't have a single fan complaining about what they saw in this 10-rounder. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mentioned the buzz in the fight started to increase in that second round when they were just fighting nonstop on the ropes. I can hear it and feel it right now. Crowd we'll, is loving it. We'll let you listen in to the final seconds. 
And this is fighting. Scorecards. Robert Hoyle scores it 99 to 91. Dwayne Ford, 97 to 93. And Dave Moretti scores it 96 to 94. All three in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Mile high. Mile I think that decision makes sense.